Hello, welcome. This is the um, <coughs> AQA Physics. This is Unit One, um, January two thousand and nine. Now, possibly you can tell, possibly you can't. Uh, this is the first recur recording I've listed of uh, using the new camera. Okay, so hopefully it does look a bit better, and you can kind of see a bit further out to the sides, perhaps. Um, but anyway, in this uh, video we'll be looking at question number one. Okay, so what I've drawn behind me here is essentially what you're given in, f in this figure one. Okay, so this is n equals one, n equals two, n equals three, and n equals four. And we've got the corresponding energy levels at each state. So at n equals one, which you should also know, is the ground state. Okay, didn't write that on, just so I could waste a few seconds of your time uh, explaining it. So that's the ground state, don't forget. Okay. And n equals 2 is the net energy state, and these are energy states uh, within the atom. Okay. So, ideally, um, you should be able to distinguish the fact that these are negative, and that's because, well, the ground state is negative because the negative of that would be enough energy to ionize the atom. One other thing as well, this is given in terms of EV, so if there's ever a question where it asks about some kind of frequency of photons, which we obviously now relate to the energy, we have to convert it in the energy into joules. Now, just a bit of a recap before we get into this question, joules to EV, well, I always think of EV, basically, the reason they come up with EV is so that they can say, right, when we, we want these numbers to be bigger. What can we do to make them bigger? I know we'll do some random calculation and just because we're scientists, we'll say it's true and everyone will believe it. And students like you will have to do it uh, and just have to comprehend it. But anyway, basically, the idea is EV is going to make really small numbers of joules bigger. Okay, that's the whole idea. So EV will always be bigger than joules. So when we go from joules to EV, and obviously it's to do with the charge of an electron, we'll be dividing by the charge of an electron. In other words, will be dividing by that 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Obviously in joules. Okay, so that will get us EV, and then obviously from going from EV to joules is the opposite. We do the multiplication. We times EV by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, because obviously it's less than 1, so it's going to give an answer less than that. Okay, so let's say hopefully all of that makes sense. Anyway, that's just a bit of a recap um, of all of this. Now, question 1A, I've kind of already answered it in my explanation for this diagram, okay? It says, uh, the level n equals 1 is the ground state of the atom. State the ionisation of uh, energy of the atom in EV. So we don't have to do any of this converted to joules. You just have to associate that this, as I say, minus 13.6 is the negative of the ionisation energy. Because that's the energy we need to ionise the atom, okay? So you could think of that, the I need to, you know, remove an atom is, is the positive of each of these figures at whichever energy state you're at, okay? So the ionisation energy uh, from the ground state is the negative of, is the positive of this 13.6, okay? So A is equal to 13.6 EV, okay? Now it's not as asked us to convert it into joules, so obviously you don't have to. Okay, so the next part, part B, says when an electron of... 12.1 EV collides with the atom, photons of three different energies are emitted. And we have to show it on this figure one here. So probably B should be kind of up here. Now, an energy, uh, an electron with energy 12.1 EV. Now, you may be thinking, how the hell is that energy? Where does it come from? Well, you don't really need to know too much. But actually, you do, but not for this question. It's going to transfer all its energy, that's the key thing with this, okay? And um, the energy it's giving is, obviously, it's transferring its kinetic energy, but because it, it doesn't mention what type of energy, like, probably it's likely to be kinetic, okay? So, obviously, you know, it's going to give all of its energy. So you might be going, ah, but we need 13.6 EV to ionise the atom. Well, that's very true. But it mentions here we need three different photons, basically. Okay, so if we're exciting from, basically we've got to go from this one ground state, when uh, photons are released, what happens is obviously the electrons are excited up to an energy state, they therefore, after a certain period of time, they de-excite, releasing a photon. Okay, so basically what's going to happen is the, the photon, uh, sorry, the electron from n equals 1, the ground state, has got to go up to another state and release um, the energy. Now, really nicely it's told us 3. Okay, so if you're not 
you can maybe go, ah, well, there's 12.1 EV here, but a ground state says 13.6 EV. Well, yes, it's very true, but a maximum energy state is N, N equals 4, okay, and that's uh, 0.85 EV. Okay, so the difference between 13.6 and 0.85, in other words, you do 13.6, take 0.5 EV, and you'll find that it's less than the 12.1 EV, and you don't really need to know too much uh, about it. Okay, so here, the idea is the only three energy states are this. Okay, so it can either be excited up to energy um, N equals 2, okay, and obviously we'll release a photon of that energy. Okay, so it's by the, the wave is meant to be a photon. Okay, it can either be excited up to n equals three, and then dxi. Okay, so it's going to have something like that. Or okay, so there's two. Obviously, we're going to need another one because it's specified three. The only other possible energy state we can go to that we haven't yet been to is n equals four. So it's going to therefore go up to n equals four, then dxi, and go back to the ground state. Okay. Maybe something like that. So hopefully you can pick that out. Right. Um, okay, so B part one. And really, I tried to give you a bit of an explanation to that, but if you're not 100 percent sure, you just have to realise it's mentioning about uh, three different photons are emitted. Okay, so what possible way can three photons be emitted from these four ground states? Four four states of energy, okay, within inside the atom. Okay, and you just have to go with the theory that it goes up to an energy state and then goes back to where it came from. In other words, it goes from the ground state of n equals 1 up to an energy level and then dxi's releasing the photon. Okay, so that pattern has got to be uh, three times, okay, so it's got to go to three different energy states and go back to n equals 1. Okay, and as we've only got four energy states, you know, that's where we go. So it's very nice, they could have made that question more complicated by including other energy states. Okay, so anyway, um, part B part 2 says calculate the wavelength of the photon with the smallest energy. Now I said the energy of a photon depends on the frequency. Well, that's very true. But you have to remember the uh, wave equation, okay, which says C is equal to F lambda. In other words, the speed of the wave, okay, in this case photons speed of light, so that's why I put C there. But obviously in any other wave equation, you're likely to put at v, okay, just velocity, it doesn't matter. Okay, so therefore, if we wanted to, obviously, therefore, there's a direct link between the frequency and the wavelength, okay, so if we wanted to get from the frequency to the wavelength, okay, what we do is the wavelength is equal to the speed of light over the frequency. Okay, and obviously, therefore, the frequency is the speed of light over the wavelength. Okay, so that's what we need to do, but a bit later on. Now, as I say, you could potentially replace in the equation, okay, because we know the energy of a photon is uh, E equals HF, and obviously that's not in terms of the wavelength, but you could make it in terms of the wavelength if you wanted to, by simply rearranging C equals F lambda, okay, and subbing it in to E equals HF, <laughs> okay, that's what I'm going to do because I'm lazy, okay, so we know, as I say, C equals HF, we want lambda, okay, in terms of the frequency, now put it there, okay, so I said the lambda, the speed of the wave is equal to the speed of light, say, over the frequency, okay? And we know, oh, sorry, it's only in terms of the frequency, what the hell am I going on about? Okay, so the frequency is equal to the speed of light over the wavelength. Okay, sorry about that. So it's that one we want, okay? So we want it in terms of the frequency, so E equals H, and I said E equals HF, but we know F is equal to C over lambda, so E is equal to H times the frequency, frequency being speed of light, light over wavelength. Okay, so the energy of the photon, therefore, is equal to H times the speed of light over the wavelength. Or, as I say, you could just simply convert the frequency into the wavelength through a different equation. But that should be lazy and combining equations, because we can. There's nothing wrong doing that. Okay, so anyway, back to this question. What we want here... Um, is the wavelength, sorry, the wavelength of photon with the smallest energy. Have I done that? Uh, could you get away with doing that? Yeah, I don't see why not. Okay, um, so we want it with the smallest energy. And if you want it with the smallest energy, okay, so it's not acting for the smallest wavelength, although that's probably going to go hand in hand with the smallest wavelength. Um, 
So remember this is not the fact that we're looking for the, the photon with the smallest wavelength, we're looking for the wavelength of the photon with the smallest energy. Okay? So out of the three, basically, the, the smallest energy is going to be the, the photon which has been emitted from the two energy states which have the lowest um, which have the smallest difference between them, if that makes sense. I, I don't know, that went not very well. Okay, so is it going to be that when the electron excites from n equals 1 to n equals 4 and then de excites? Well, probably not because that's the biggest energy difference, we want the smallest. Okay, is it going to be n equals 1 to n equals 3? Well, no, because that's bigger than n equals 1 to n equals 2. So the energy change is going to be from n equals 1 to n equals 2. And, and remember, with photons, okay, the energy that the electron absorbs from the excitation is also released in the um, photon. Okay, so therefore the energy change is equal to the difference between the energy state in n equals one and then energy state in n equals two. Now, as I said, okay, you want to work out the energy change. So that's perfectly okay. Obviously, what you would do is 13.6 minus 3.4 but it's key to remember that they are both in EV and obviously e equals HF equation if you want the frequency okay in terms of uh, the Hertz okay which obviously you, you can therefore convert into meters you want it in terms of joules in other words we need to convert the difference between 13.6 and 13.4 from EV into joules now bear in mind I said when we went from joules to EV we divided by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 because EV is going to be greater. Okay, so the opposite end of the scale goes if we want to convert from EV to joules, we times by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. So that's what we're going to do here. So you work out what 13.6 is, take the 3.4, which is obviously going to be 10.2. Okay, so it's 10.2 EV over. Uh, wait, no, sorry, 10.2 EV times the charge of an electron, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, and that is equal to the E equals HF equation, but remember, I was lazy, and I said, because the speed of a wave equals the frequency times the wavelength, we rearranged it to get into the frequency, so we had the speed of light over the wavelength, okay, and that is equal to the energy difference of the photon, okay, so that's equal to 10.2 EV, which we converted to joules, okay, so that's the only way I put this times here, is equal to h, which is Planck's constant, which is 6.63 uh, times 10 to the minus 34, and you times that by the speed of light, which is obviously 3 times 10 to the 8, okay, and that's over the wavelength of the photon, okay, and then it's all a case of simply rearranging that equation, okay, and, um, Obviously, it will give you a wavelength. Now, it says here it wants a, a, to a appropriate number of significant figures. Now, whenever it says, okay, so I will crack out that for a minute, but I just want to go over this. It says give your answer to an appropriate number of significant figures. Now, obviously, you're going to get a significant figures mark. They wouldn't have mentioned it otherwise. They, well, they, they, you know, they, they might do, but the general philosophy, and not Van Gaal's philosophy, it's been five now. Um, it's going to be the, you have to look at the other numbers, that, other bits of data that's given in the question, okay, and you could, what significant figures have they all been given to? Now, generally when it mentions, give your answer to an appropriate number of significant figures, they're all going to be of the, se <coughs> of the uh, same number of significant figures. And in this question, every single number, apart from the number of energy states, but as I say, you don't have any state 1.1, Okay, um, they're all given to three significant figures. Now, it says significant figures and not decimal places because they're given to different decimal places but the same significant figures. So we need to give our answer for our wavelength in terms of uh, three significant figures. Okay, um, sorry, one second. Okay, so um, the wavelength was 6.54 times 10 to the minus 7, two, three significant figures. Now, 
just want to mention at this point, um, I kind of got B wrong there. It simply didn't look at the mark scheme to check that I was right, so I do apologise about that. Okay, so, I mean, hopefully, you know, you probably spotted that from the mark scheme uh, anyway, okay? But the, the reason being is because I didn't check that 13.6 take uh, 0.85, okay? Um, yeah, was obviously equal uh, to 12.1. So the actual proper answer for B, okay? was um, obviously it gets excited to n equals 3 d excites straight from um, n equals 3 okay or the other possible route is it d excites to n equals 2 and then d excites again to n equals 1 okay so the three stages okay the three photons that could be emitted are from n equals 3 to n equals 1 from n equals 3 to n equals 2 and from n equals 2 to n equals 1 Okay, hopefully that makes sense and um, I will also say that in the mark scheme it did do pretty much what I just explained there. Okay, so if you didn't get that please do let me know and we'll just do it through the normal route of doing E equals HF, working out the frequency, converting the frequency into wavelengths and then subbing it in. But really that saves quite a bit of time and I think it's quite a lot easier as well. Okay, so that's pretty much it for question one. Um, sorry about the, you know, complete not to cock up there. Uh, just, just happens. Okay, I probably put uh, a little comment above uh, when I was doing part B, just so that the other people do know that people obviously can't bother watching it to the end of the video. Other people like some of the people probably watching it now would just skip to the end to try and see the answers. So, uh, for the benefit of those, there are the answers. Okay, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next question.